Hello everybody, this is Dee Finch and as promised I'm doing a little tutorial on how to set up OBS for YouTube gaming streams. Uh, before I begin I'd like to just explain this piece of art. Uh, I couldn't find a desktop background that uh, properly suited my interests. I do, I do like the splash app for Misfortune's arcade skin but there just wasn't enough news so I just did a little bit of mastery here and now uh, it's more sexy so you're welcome if you want to download the link for this uh, desktop let me know in the description I mean the comments yeah anyway OBS usually OBS is the preferred streaming program though if you are new to streaming I do really recommend starting with Ga XSplit Gamecaster it is paid but it is so easy to set up it is this program I started off with when I first when I first started streaming, uh, it was a program that came with my computer, and it calibrated all of the uh, internet settings and my computer settings automatically. So all I had to worry about was just playing the game. It's really great. Um, it works exceptionally well if you only have one monitor because the way it operates is that the chat is overlaid onto your game, though your stream can only see it if you choose to let them see it. It's great. It was great for me when I first started really do recommend this if you're just trialing streaming seeing if you like it or not otherwise this is the program i use uh sorry for the inception bit going on here but obs it's free um it has all the functionalities of expert as far as i know of and it's free it's what most of the big streamers use i believe and it's really easy to set up uh, once you know what you're doing. So that's what I'll be doing today, explaining how to set up. So uh, if you're new to this, you would uh, be given just a blank thing. You wouldn't have any of these things down here. Uh, and you'd open up your settings uh, where you'd start with your general. So right now I cannot select it because I'm recording with my uh, OBS right now. So here you could uh, set your settings. So I already have YouTube selected. I actually have two profiles, one for Twitch, one for YouTube, though my Twitch profile hasn't been used in a while. It's really convenient to have multiple profiles if you do stream on multiple platforms, just because you don't have to change your broadcasting settings or your encoding or whatever every time. Because YouTube Gaming actually allows you to stream at a higher quality than Twitch would, so yes, good to have those separate profiles if you're thinking about doing two. So you just add um, I've done that so it's really easy once you get into it here we start with the encoder x264 use cbr enable cbr padding uh yes pretty much all this topic exactly like mine is don't worry about that too much but the max bit rate this is what most people struggle with when they first start streaming they're not sure what bit rate they should be streaming at um uh, well, it really depends on how good your internet is. So I'm going to do this for a second. Uh, that's me, Twitter. You should be using speedtest.net or any kind of like internet testing website to see how fast your internet actually is. Um, I'm very fortunate. I have MBN, which is very fast internet. So I have 100 down. I should have 40 up, but I don't know why I don't today. So I really need to call my internet service provider and see what is going on. But this is still really good. Nine is definitely enough. I wouldn't really recommend streaming uh, if you had a speed below five upload. The download is less important, but I've heard of people streaming on two upload, but it was for games like RuneScape or something that wasn't so you know, internet intensive. I think it really does depend, but I really wouldn't recommend anything under five, at the very, very minimum. Um, uh, so, because I have very good internet, I'm streaming at three thousand five hundred um, kilobytes per second. Uh, the way I can calculate that is by getting my uh, sorry, getting my upload speed and just converting it. Uh, because this is megabits just converting it to kilobytes uh, through Google, just Google it, it's super easy. Uh, and then when you're given that number, it's usually recommended that you only use 
80% of your upload speed because you don't really want to push it in case like, you know, you're playing an online game where you do actually need that internet speed. You don't want to push it to the very limit where your stream quality is suffering because of it. So 80%, um, I'm actually way below that, but at this bit rate, I do stream at uh, 1080p. Uh, if you want to stream at 8, 1080p, make sure your internet can handle it first, but it's usually recommended that uh, your bitrate be between 3000 and 3500. For 720p, it is 1800 1, to 2500, and for 480p, it's usually 900 to 900 to 1200 bitrate. Okay, did you get that? <laughs> Hopefully you did. All right, I wouldn't really recommend streaming below that quality because it's not fun to watch streams that are at such a low quality. Wouldn't really recommend that. I'd recommend upgrading internet if you are considering or going to an internet cafe. You can totally stream there. It's not obnoxious. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, moving on to broadcasting settings, it is really easy for YouTube gaming, unlike Twitch, there is only one primary um, server here, so live stream, obviously, because that's what we're doing, streaming service is YouTube gaming, you can stream on all these other ones as well, but we are doing the tutorial for YouTube gaming. Uh, primary, do not bother with the backup YouTube server, I've never needed it primary works well. Uh, the path stream key. The way to get this is by, where is it? This is my YouTube C. We go up to the top left corner, create a studio, uh, which will then take us to uh, live streaming. Click on the live streaming tab. That is me looking like a dad because I was having a bad hair day. Um, and down here, encode us that up. Uh, server URL, don't worry about that. Stream key here. Best not to reveal this once you're making a video like me. Uh, if you do accidentally, you can, once you click reveal, you can reset the stream key, but do not share this with anyone. If you give this stream key out to anyone, they can stream on your account easily, very easily. So don't do that. Uh, enter it in here. Auto reconnect 10 automatically seems to use the file. Make sure you untick this if you don't want every stream saved to your computer. Um, I made the mistake of unticking, of having this ticked for a very long time and I was wondering why my computer was so slow. It was because I was saving all these um, five hour, six hour streams to my computer without realizing uh, the rest of this. Don't worry about it. We move on to the video now. Um, I use a custom resolution here because my uh, computer resolution is actually larger. Uh, so I only need uh, 1080p, so I do this. Uh, obviously, you don't have to do this if your resolution's already at that. You can just click on monitor. Um, so this should actually be the resolution of your computer, or like very close, you know. Once you do that, you need to downscale it. If you are streaming at a lower quality than the resolution that is up here if you understand. Uh, so if I, my resolution is this, right, uh, I would, if I wanted to stream at 720p rather than 1080p, I would need to downscale it to uh, 1280 by 720. And by doing this, I would be reducing the amount of internet usage and I wouldn't have to like, you know, encode as much. So this is a good idea to do if you are streaming at a lower quality. Obviously you can fiddle with this, but I recommend that you do test every stream before you go live. So maybe have a second account that you trial on and have a friend to like give you like live feedback. Uh, my friends per second are 60. We are very fortunate on YouTube Gaming that YouTube Gaming supports uh, 60 frames per second. If you're streaming on Twitch, this tutorial is applicable, but you would only be able to do 30 frames per second. So yay, YouTube, woohoo, we did it. Um, audio, uh, I just use a desktop default, uh, though you can, if you want to make it separate so you can hear things that your stream wouldn't be able to hear, you can fiddle with this. I recommend just using the default, though, so whenever you hear something, your stream will also hear it. It's a lot easier, a lot simpler. Um, every time I stream, I need to select the microphone I am using. I use a headset because I do game off a gaming laptop and it can be loud and uh, 
desktop mic is not really possible for me at the moment until I upgrade. Um, so every time, if you have multiple microphones that you do use, I do recommend making sure that that is connected to the right mic every time you do it because it does reset every time you close. So make sure you do that. Show only connected devices, don't worry about that. Push to talk, uh, you don't really need that unless you are using, what, what did I change? Oh my goodness, what did you do? Yes. Hotkeys. You should know what a hotkey is. You press the button, it does a thing. Uh, so if you wanted to use push to talk, if you had a lot of background noise. I don't really like push to talk. I think it makes the background noise that much more obvious when you do speak. But uh, if you do want things like a mute or anything like that, I don't use any, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just press the button in and then you have a hotkey. Woohoo! Advanced. I wouldn't recommend touching any of this stuff unless you really know what you're doing. I'd do a little bit more research, but personally I do not touch it. Um, there is a noise gate if you have a lot of background issue, uh, background issue, hmm. Background noise issues, you can fiddle with this to make it so it doesn't pick up a certain like threshold of noises. So if you have a buzzing or something like that, you can get rid of that. Uh, scene switcher, don't worry about that. But that's pretty much the basic set up guide hopefully that explained it the most difficult part is just the encoding so i do recommend that you revise this video and look at what i spoke about um with the quality and the bit right just listen to that have a friend check out your stream see if your computer actually can handle it as well because you do need a really really powerful computer to stream at the quality that i stream at. i'm very fortunate that i do have a gaming laptop but it is a very good um, build. It's very good. Very high quality. I'll have the build in the description if you're curious. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, I will do a scene setup and you know, like those extra little fiddly bits like CLR browsers and chat overlays and all that fun stuff. If you guys are interested, let me know. Leave a comment in the description. Give this video a like and I will make that video depending on the feedback. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Yeah, um, I'll see you in my stream. Bye! When explaining just like the benefits of YouTube gaming over Twitch.tv and the pros and cons of each, so this might even be informative to people who haven't heard